um, I am going to make a video that I've been planning to make for a while, which is cinnamon buns. Now these are not obviously made from scratch ingredients, this is a cinnamon bun kit that I got from Costco. It says that all I need to add to it is 95 grams of unsalted butter or dairy fat spread and 200 mils of milk or soy milk. Well I haven't got unsalted butter so I'm putting ordinary butter in, I have got milk. And it says I need two square or round baking tins approximately 20 centimetres across. So I should be able to find those. Preparation time 20 minutes plus 18 minutes to 120 minutes rising and then bake time 15 to 18 minutes. So I don't need to put the oven on just yet. Okay, I need two. Put the flour, sugar and salt, which are in bag one, and the yeast, which is in bag two, into a bowl with 50 grams of soft butter or dairy-free spread. Rub together for five minutes or until there are no lumps in the mixture resembles fine breadcrumbs. Heat the milk, add to the flour mix, and form a dough, leave it to rise somewhere warm till it's double in size for 60 to 90 minutes. Press down to remove the air, roll it out, spread butter. Oh god, we'll just do it one bit at a time. So first up then, let's open the box. Easier said than done. Turn my hair back. Okay, hair back, box open. Oh, and each kit, each kit, there's, it, there's four kits in there and it's each bag separately, which is handy. So I'm just taking one out. Then I'll put the box away, I'm gonna need that for the instructions, won't I? So inside each bag, we've got bag one, Unlabeled bag. Oh no, there we go. That, that's bag four. That one is bag three. And that is the yeast, so that's bag two. So I'm going to put bag three and four to one side. I've got bags one and two, which are the ones I'm going to start working with. And I'm going to change the camera angle so you can see what I'm doing. Although it's not really very thrilling, is it? This part is just going to be rubbing stuff in. of soft butter or dairy free spread so I'm going to use oh hang on I've confused myself because I thought I bought something to make these with the other day as well maybe I didn't I'm I'm all level of confusion now so I'm going to use anchor spreadable what's the worst that can happen could all go horribly wrong if it does I've got four kits and I'll know to do it differently next time so I need 50 grams of this. I'm also going to put some gloves on because my hands are already quite rough and I don't fancy getting them in there. Now I've got to gently heat 165 mils of milk until lukewarm.
warm shouldn't take very long in the microwave, should it? I would say that's lukewarm. Add this to the flour mixture and mix until a dough is formed. All right then, off we go. And then it says knead for five minutes until smooth and elastic. It doesn't say anything about a floured surface, so I'm going to try and knead it in the bowl. But it's not, in fairness, that's not great. I don't want to add flour to the mixture by putting it on a floured surface, but it's not easy to do in the bowl. off my hand. <laughs> oh. Down. And flour the gloves just to see if that helps me be able to knead it. If you haven't kneaded dough before, by the way, you Push it away from you with the heel of your hand and then pull it back, fold it over, keep on doing that and it whew, said she losing, losing her breath. It stretches the glutens in the flour and helps you achieve a rise. And if you don't get out of breath doing it, you're not doing it hard enough, as the actress said to the bishop. Good workout for the right arm, I'll have muscles like Popeye on one side. Let's work the other arm for a bit and get some muscles on that side. So you just sort of grab it, push it away from you, and then pull it back and fold it over. And it says I have to do this until it, until it is smooth and elastic. It's already smooth. I think I'm seeing elasticity in it because it's pushing back against me. And I think one of the ways to find out is to poke your finger in it. And if it comes back, it's pretty much there. So I think I'll give that another couple of minutes. I'm singing Mississippi's in my head. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. <sighs> lovely that's got a lovely spring back on it now Let me show you what I mean. Watch the dough, ready? Boink, back up again. So, it says clean bowl. Shall I go and wash my, wash my bowl? Clean bowl. In you go. Put the dough into a clean bowl, cover with cling film and leave somewhere warm until the dough has doubled in size, okay. How long did it 
it say? 60 to 90 minutes. And then we'll come back and do something else to it. Two hours later. Okay, I am back. My dough has risen to fill the bowl. I don't know if you can, you can you guys see that? You can see that's filling the bowl. My next instruction is press the risen dough down in the bowl to remove the air. So we're gonna press the dough down in the bowl to remove the air. We're gonna do exactly what it says on the box. Oh, it feels proper. Proper puffy. I didn't specify how far down. I mean, have I removed the air? I think I've removed the air. How do you know when you've removed all the air? Okay, let's assume that I've removed the air. Okay, and then I've got to uh, roll it out into a rectangle roughly 40 centimetres long by 25 centimetres wide. It's going to be very rough because I haven't got a measuring tape. Not in the kitchen anyway. into a rectangle approximately 40 centimetres long by 25 wide. So I don't want to go too much in that direction, do I? I just want to go like this. I wonder if I push enough air out of it, who knows? A rectangle is not the easiest thing in the world, isn't it? Don't want it to be an oval or a screwball. I reckon. I reckon that's good enough. I'll get my tins out of the way. You could see what I was doing, didn't you? There we go. I reckon that's good enough. We've got a long, long old strip of dough. And now I have to spread 30 grams of very soft but not melted butter evenly over the dough. Alrighty then. Well, I'm not going to measure it because I'm taking it straight out of the tub. I'm just going to eyeball it, as they say on every other YouTube channel I've ever watched. Just eyeballing it. Spreads quite well because it's spreadable to start with, it's not really putting up a fight. I'm sure somebody will write in, write in, how can I sound like I'm on children's telly? I'm sure somebody will comment and say, oh look at you putting that knife back in the tub. I don't care. I do not care. There we go. That was quite easy, wasn't it? That was painless. Spread that out like so. Whether I used 30 grams or not, I don't know, but the job is jobbed. And then sprinkle, I'll ensure the brown sugar and cinnamon, bag three, are well mixed and sprinkle evenly over the butter dough. They are well mixed. Um, I, I've cut the corn off to make it easier to pour, so now I'm being very careful about squeezing it too hard. And I need to um, sprinkle evenly, so alrighty. been quite sparing with that because I didn't know how much I'd need and now I think I'm going to go back and just go over it again because I've got lots more than, than I thought. There we go, I think we could call that evenly spread. Oops. And now I've got to roll the dough up lengthways and use a sharp knife to cut it into 10 slices. Okay. Roll you up lengthways. Start gathering you, I suppose. 
Don't fight back, you've got to roll up. It's a good job that no professional pastry chefs watch my channel, isn't it? If you are a professional pastry chef and you've tuned into this, you're going to be wondering what the hell you're watching. Okay, I rolled it up. It says 10 equal parts. It looks very long. Do you think I've done more than 40 centimetres? I think I've done more like 50 or 60 centimetres. Oh well. Down middle there. Move that up. Chop that end off for neatness. And that end as well, because there's not a lot in that one anyway. Oh, now I've made it all weird. And then... One there. One there. One there. One there. Now I've got a weird bit. I'm going to sandwich that together. I should have ended up with ten, and I've got nine and this weird bit of randomness here. <laughs> Move the camera as you can see. That's what happens when you don't obey the rules, children at home. Okay. And now I've already put baking paper. It doesn't say baking paper. It just says grease the tins because my tins are a bit old and naff. I've put um, baking paper in there and um, then I've sprayed the baking paper as well. And then these go in that way up. They're not going to stand up though, are they? Because some of them are... Have I done this wrong, do you think? I bet I have. Should they be closer together? It doesn't specify how, how much space I should be leaving. That seems like a, a lot of space for them to fall over and go wrong in. Maybe I misunderstood the measurements. 40 centimetres long by 25 centimetres wide. I don't know whether I did that or not, whether I did something entirely different. They have to go that way up, don't they, to become cinnamon rolls, surely? Those bits are just random, they're going in the middle there. I genuinely have no idea whether these are going to work. It says I now need to cover the tins and leave them to rise again. Roll the dough up lengthways, use a sharp knife to cut into ten slices, lightly grease the tins and gently place the slices into the tins flattest side down. I think I've done that. Cover the tins and leave to rise again in a warm place for 20 to 30 minutes. All right, then. I'll get some clean tea towels out. Oh, no, hang on. Cling film it was, wasn't it? I'll get some cling film out. We'll cover the tins again and we'll see how they look in a bit. Later. They have sort of risen a bit. I'm going to... I think I'm going to space them out a bit more. I don't know whether, whether they need that or not, but I'm assuming that if I baked anything else I'd space it out a bit you know I put them together in the middle of the pans give them something to lean on while they spread some of them have expanded more than others that one there hasn't expanded very much at all anyway there they are I need to brush them with 200 mils of milk not each brushed them all with milk and they're going into the oven at 180 for 15 to 18 minutes or until they are golden brown. It says while the buns are in the oven make the icing by combining 15 grams of soft butter with the icing sugar bag and gradually add, gradually add around a tablespoon of milk and mix until it's thick but spreadable. So 15 grams, that's not very much, is it? That's about that much, really not very much at all. I didn't realise that the icing would have butter in. I'm not a problem, I just didn't realise it.
it says I'm looking for a icing that is thick but spreadable. Which I think I would call that thick but spreadable. So we'll leave that there. We'll put these away and we're just waiting for them to be out of the oven probably another five minutes or so. Okay, I left them in a couple of minutes too long because the Domino's man came to the door with the pizza and they have unrolled themselves. They are not as tightly rolled as they ought to be. So I need to, when I make, when I make the next kit, I need to work out how to fasten them up a bit. I think probably that I just made them the wrong shape, didn't I? I'm going to let them cool a little bit and then I'm going to come out and put the icing on in a minute. I've just... Sorry about the light. While I was eating my tea, I've just realised what I did wrong. I think I rolled them up the wrong way. I rolled them narrow way and I think I should have rolled them long ways. I think I was an idiot. It says roll the dough up lengthways and I went, that's the length and rolled it. I, I'm an idiot. Oh well. They look like this. They are still warm. I'm going to put the icing on. They're going to taste okay, aren't they? I mean, that one's a little bit blackened. But we will live and learn. And the next lot, I will know that I need to roll them the other direction, won't I? And then they will have more rolls and they'll be thinner and flatter. So they won't unfold so much. And everything will be brilliant, and I was a moron. This is, this, see, this is why we have YouTube channels. I make these mistakes so you don't have to. Isn't that generous of me? I'll be very generous with this icing as well. Quite how they drizzle it. I expect they use a piping bag, don't they, in the, in the cinnamon whirl factory. Oh, that didn't even go on a bun. That went straight into the baking tray. They're not beautiful, but they should be edible, which is about all I say about all of my cooking. <laughs> is there only one way to find out, Mark? Shall I have that one? I'll have that one. Looks all right, doesn't it? Proof of the pudding is in the eating. Can I get it in my mouth and not be messy? Probably not. Oh. Tastes good. A little bit crunchy where I left them in a little bit too long, I think. And I think if they were flatter, they wouldn't be so crunchy. Because if they were thinner and flatter, they'd have joined up more in the pan around the edges, wouldn't they? So the edges would have stayed soft, you know what I mean? But they're edible. I'll have another go another time and uh, roll them in the other direction. Thanks for watching. Bye. I forgot to say, if I can, I'll find a link and put it below for you, for the kit.